How do you read a chest x-ray? What's this chest x-ray show right there? How about this one here? What about that one? You gotta have a system, and I'm gonna show you mine today. It's as simple as the ABCs. Let's do it. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name is Dr. Eric Pearson. I'm a pediatric surgeon, and today we're doing chest x-rays. You gotta have a system if you're looking at chest x-rays because it's something we gotta look at every day as surgeons, whether you're an adult surgeon or a pediatric surgeon, or if you're a physician of any type. If you're a nurse, you gotta know how to look at chest x-rays. And if you don't have a systematic way of going through it, you are gonna miss something, all right? So I showed you three x-rays right in the intro did you pick up what the findings were? Well, we'll go through them at the end. All right, so how do I go through a chest x-ray? So I said it's as easy as the ABCs, and that's what I do. So I go A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And there's something that stands for each one of those letters. So let's do A first. Well, A is airway. So you can see this right here. We're outlining the trachea and the main stem bronchi and what am I looking for when I look at the airway? Well, I'm going to be looking to see, is that trachea shifted? If the trachea is shifted, then oftentimes if we have a tension pneumothorax, it's going to be shifted away, pushed across the mediastinum. If I have a lung collapse, it'll be pulled towards that side. So if I have a right lung collapse, the trachea might be pulled towards the right side. Also, I may look for any foreign bodies in the airway. If I have a history of a choking episode or somebody that comes in with increased work of breathing, they could have inhaled something, I'm gonna look especially in that right main stem bronchus. Could we see an airway foreign body? Other things that we can look for in the airway are, is there increased soft tissue edema around the airway? Is the airway narrowed at all? So airway is first, that's A. So going on to B, B is B. Bones, okay? So it's not airway breathing circulation, it's airway bones, all right? And so look at this right here. We got all the bones kind of outlined in yellow. And I'm going to take a quick survey down the bones. I'm going to look and make sure that the clavicles are level. I'm going to see if there's any fractures there. I'm going to go down the ribs and I'm going to follow them from the spine all the way out. And I'm going to quickly go down each rib because we can see that there might be fractures at the angled rib very laterally if I'm looking for non-accidental trauma. So a, a child comes in and we're worried about possible child abuse or non-accidental trauma, oftentimes we might see healed posterior rib fractures. So right along the posterior aspect of that rib. So I'll go through the clavicles, through the ribs, take a quick look at the humerus, and uh, that's going to be it for bones. So then we move on to C. So C is cardiac, and that is looking at the cardiac silhouette. Now, there is a lot when it comes to the cardiac silhouette. We can look for a boot-shaped heart. We can look for cardiomegaly. We can look for a loss of an aortic pulmonary window. There are a lot of specifics, but really, I'm looking at the heart. Is the heart shifted to the right or the left? Is it in levo position where it's supposed to be on the left, or is it in dextro position on the right? Do we have enlargement of the heart? So does the heart take up more than one of the hemithoraces. Just a real quick look at the heart, and that is C for cardiac. Then I go to D. So D is the diaphragm. Now, as a clue, one of the x-rays you saw today had a problem with D, the diaphragm, okay? So I'm gonna look for even contours of the diaphragm. Do we have a supremely elevated diaphragm? Like we might see if we had a phrenic nerve injury. Okay, or if we had a diaphragmatic eventration, do we have any air under the diaphragm? Do we have a defect in the diaphragm? Hint, hint. Okay, so D is for diaphragm. Those are the things I'm looking for. Diaphragm is an important muscle, separates the thoracic and the abdominal cavities. So that puts us to E. Now, E is external stuff. And in this x ray right here, you can see we got some external stuff. We have a chest tube but I'm gonna be looking for 
external lines. I'm going to be looking for chest leads. I'm going to be looking at the chest tube. All the different things that are not part of the human body that could be on the chest. So that's E. F is lung fields. Okay, so looking at the lung fields from top to bottom, I'm going to be looking for pneumothorax. I'm going to be looking for a pleural effusion. Do we have haziness of those costodiaphragmatic angles? Do we have thickening of the pleura or a rind we might see in a pleural effusion? I'm going to be looking at the actual lung parenchyma itself. Is it nice and black and translucent as we would see in normal healthy lung tissue that's well penetrated? But I could see a consolidation. I might see a nematocele. I might see a ground glass appearance to the lungs. So looking at those lung fields, that's F. And so finally, G is the gastric bubble. And this is really drawing my attention to that left side. Is there a gastric bubble? Is it in a normal location? I'm also here going to look again for free air. If we have an x-ray of a child or a baby, we're going to have a lot of the abdomen in that x-ray. So do we have any evidence of obstruction? Is there, you know, a double wall sign or a wriggler sign, which is where you can see both sides of the intestinal wall, or the football sign where the falciform ligament is outlined by air? Those are all signs of pneumoperitoneum or free air. So this is how I go through an x-ray every time I'm looking at an x-ray. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So let's go through a couple of examples. So let's go through this one right here. So let's say we have a zero day old infant and we are born and we get an x-ray and this is what we see. So some of the things we see, so A, the airway is pushed over to that right side a little bit. The bones are okay, normal bones for a baby. We go ahead and see C, the cardiac silhouette is pushed over to the right. D, the diaphragm. There is not a continuous diaphragm, and so here we are concerned that there's a defect in the diaphragm. When we get to E, extra stuff, we got some lines and tubes here. We see that the, the orogastric tube is in the chest. That's not normal, okay? And then when we get to F, we can see that the left lung field is not normal, and this is evidenced by the congenital diaphragmatic hernia that's present. We're also not seeing a gastric bubble there. Okay, so this is an example, abnormal chest x-ray, and this is an x-ray of a zero-day infant who has a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Okay, well, let's take another chest x-ray and look at it. Well, this one right here, so this is a chest x-ray of what? So here, if we go through, we can see A, well, the airway, that looks normal, trachea is in the center, our bronchi are normal, no airway obstruction, B, the bones look good, C, the cardiac silhouette, and so D, do we see a normal diaphragm? Well, we have a normal diaphragmatic contour, but we really can't see it because of the haziness of that costodiaphragmatic angle at the right side that's consistent with a pleural effusion. So that has our mind going, all right? So E, not a lot of external support in this one, but F, our lung fields. Obviously, on this one, we have a really hazy right lung field. We have thickening of the pleura on the right side. And then G, we have a normal gastric bubble, but this is a patient who has a pneumonia with a paranemonic effusion and an empyema that uh, needs to be drained. And how about this next one? Okay, what do we see here? Well, we go through A, we have an airway. It's maybe suddenly pushed over to that right side. B, bones are normal. C, cardiac silhouette is normal. D, diaphragms are normal. Okay, no haziness. There's no diaphragmatic defects. E, no external support. F, what do we see? Well, we have a massive left-sided pneumothorax. There's no lung fields here. Okay, and then G, our gastric bubble, would be normal. So big pneumothorax here. This patient had a spontaneous pneumothorax, ended up getting a apical lung resection and a pleuridesis. I hope you enjoyed that at Citizen Surgeon today, how to read a chest x-ray. This is something I looked at five chest x-rays just today. All right, so something you gotta know, and you gotta have a system to go through it. So mine is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Every time, it's like breathing. If you've been watching these videos, you know that I do the same thing when I see a patient. So Chandler, you know, I do the same thing when I'm taking a pain history. That's the SRNOPD Sarah.
All right? So if you liked it and you thought it was valuable, give it a like, give it a share, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. What was your favorite part? As always, stay safe, study hard. I'll see you next time.